we are live now too. Uh, did you want to go check that out? Yeah, I'll check it out. <clears throat> People can still hear us, huh? Yeah, I because I, I didn't turn off the mic. All right, I'm gonna. It's it's good. It looks good. Live. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn on the music. See if you can hear the music. Okay. Tight. I want to mute myself. Hey, bye.
Yo, what it is? Yo, what it is? It's your boy Peter Yang. And this is me speaking at a normal tone. Cause I don't know who's listening. Boy. I don't want I don't want my employers to, to know I'm doing this on the side, you know what I'm Yo, what up? What up, what up? What up, man? All right, I was, um... That was pretty cool, man. What is huh? going on? That was pretty cool. Huh? What's going on, dude? Yo, welcome welcome to another episode of the live stream on Thursdays. 8 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. My name is Peter, and this is... Frankie Mer Yang. Yes. You already know what it is. Cool, man. Um, today's episode is going to be freaking awesome because we have a special guest, uh, Daniel Lee. He will be on later on tonight. But first, we're going to go ahead and start with um, a fun segment of mine that um, I have planned for, for Peter. <laughs> um, but yeah, but let's, um, let's go ahead and just jump right into it, all right, Peter? Yeah, dude. Lead, lead the way, dog. Lead the way. Uh, first off, first off, uh, let's let's uh, let's let's talk to you. let's explain the the hair today. Oh, <laughs> tell me yours, man. Why, oh, um, yours? <laughs> what are you talking about? I've I've always done this. I was born this way, dude. You woke up like that. 
Yeah. No, I was born this way, dude. When I came out of uh, my mom's, you know, vaginal area, I was like curly hair dude, you know what I'm saying? That's some good jeans on you, man. Thanks, dude. Some good jeans. Thanks, dude. Um, but yeah, man, let's go ahead and uh, I guess let's get right into it, yeah. <laughs> okay. I just got the fresh haircut today, too. Very nice, so, very nice. Look at that vertical cut. Get ready? Straight. All right, so you so we're pulling up the first video? Yeah, yeah, let's go ahead and pull up the first video. Um, I got um, some questions here ready for your man. All right, here we go. Were there any moments that felt emotion? Can you can you hear anything? Oh my god. Okay. All right, hold up. Everything's fucking up. You know, I, I, you know, one of these weeks, uh, one of these weeks, we're gonna we're gonna do this without any, without any hiccups. It seems. Seems like. Oh. Soon, soon, soon. Okay, can you hear? Can you hear me? Hello. What did what? Uh, Were there any moments that felt emotionally the same even after you guys were successful? I remember this this one thing. It's fucking up, huh? For all of us, Christy, you know, went to Ralph's. She comes home with all these groceries and she is telling me, hey, I, while I was in line, I ran into so-and-so. She was the person right behind me at checkout. This is one of our peers, our friends. Now, again, nobody knows. You can't. Yeah. Struggling at this point. Uh, can you, can you hear me? You can't hear me either, huh? Yo, by the way, guys, we have a reminder. We have a special guest Yo, what today. It is? Yo, what it is? As Peter is working on the um, technical side of stuff, we have uh, Daniel Lee that's going to be coming on at six thirty. He he's a very interesting man. He is a writer, actor, director in Los Angeles, California. He is one of the core leaders, or um, I want to say. Uh, yeah, leaders in in Los Angeles as a creator, as a uh, in monk community. Uh, he's also a uh, um, my, my minority activist, which is awesome, and a mental health. Yo, sorry, sorry about that, dude. Uh, here we go. Okay, here we go moments that felt emotionally the same even after you guys were successful i remember this this one, one thing turned it around for all of us christina went to route she comes home with all these groceries and she's telling me hey I, is audio still messing up man to so -and -so. It, it's skip the person right behind me it's skipping it's skipping here and there huh yeah, it's like yeah, it's like it goes for a segment and it stops for like five seconds and then it continues again. You know, one of these days, one of these days, uh, Are there any moments that we'll get this shit working. That's why we need people to join our Patreon that's sponsoring this video, this live stream. So you guys need to go and subscribe to our Patreon so we can upgrade our equipment to work better for you guys. I second that. Were there any moments that felt emotionally the same even after you? 
Oh, brother. I'll tell you what. I'll pull up mines, and then we'll do, uh, we'll do that okay. one. Okay. So, uh, um, yeah, Daniel's uh, <laughs> a great dude. And he, he's going to be on, and, he, and um, can't wait to ask him some questions. To everyone that is supporting us, man, we love you guys. We have nothing but love to show to you guys and share you guys our knowledge and perspective on um, videos and pop culture and what's going on in your life and, and fixing, what I mean, fixing just opinions on mental health and minority situations. They're not. They're not problems. Because problems seems worse than situations. Great terminology, brother. By the way, this website that uh, Peter is using, I highly recommend anyone that wants to download a TikTok TikTok video without the watermark. It's a great website. Definitely use that. Use that as one of your resources. Me and Peter use it all the time to. Um, capture TikTok videos and, and um, put it on our TikTok to get a more clear video for you guys. So anyone that's been, has been working out or has a side hustle, like, please sh tell us what you got, tell us what's going on. Oh, oh, we had it downloaded even better. Now we don't have to wait on the buffering. Get ready? Oh, yeah. All right, let's go. Let's do this. Were there any moments that felt emotionally the same even after you guys were successful? I remember this this one thing turned it around for all of us. Christina went to Ralph's. She comes home with all these groceries and she's telling me, hey, I, while I was in line, I ran into so-and-so. She was the person right behind me at checkout. This is one of our peers, our friends. Now, again, nobody knows how bad we're struggling at this point. And I said, okay, I see the groceries here, so you clearly bought groceries. I said, did you use the food stamps? And she said, well, yeah, I, of course I did. Back then, they gave you like four or five page printout of checks. So you had to stand in line and like everyone behind you hated you. The process took 10, 15 minutes probably. Yeah. Well, I was poor person. Yeah. 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 There's, there's, person. There's, now people know I'm not, I'm not providing. I don't make any money. I can't feed my kids. So I didn't talk to her for about a week. We didn't talk. And I was so upset that she would make me look bad, right? Again, my ego. About a week goes by and she says, you know, honey, why would I be upset about using food stamps to feed our kids? This isn't who we are and it's not where we're staying. It's just something that we're going through. I got it. In a very nice way, she was telling me, I believe in you, get your ass to work, Get us out of this Damn. as fast as you can. All right, man. Perspective. What's going on? What's going to be in mind? Hey, how, how was the uh, audio on that one? It was good. I think we should start doing the vlog and just down the videos. And it's just okay. no distractions. It's just straightforward. Perfect. So you heard it? Too. You heard it fine? Yeah. I wonder how the live stream is going to hear it. Because uh, on my end, it was quiet as fuck. So. Really? Shit. Alright. Okay, cool man. Uh you want me to express on it? Yeah, go ahead. I think it's tight. I think um like uh uh what is it? Uh, for better or for worse, for richer or for poor, right? I think I think that the those, you know, vows that you hear uh in Hollywood, right, on the on the big screen and then that's what they say. Um I think I think that's what that was in that video, you know, is that I understand that, you know, right now we're kind of in the shit, right, financially, and you got to understand that, you know, we have to take our egos out of the relationship and focus on prospering, right, on, on getting to a better place. Um, and so that's what that was. And I think a lot of times, you know, in our relationships, when we get into arguments, we think it's the end, you know, or I'm not going to say we because I don't fucking think like that. Um, but people think that, you know, it's, it's the end of the world because we can't get over this argument, right? Or, or maybe, you know, financial problem is, is a real big, um, 
stress point in a marriage, right? Uh, that causes divorces is, is uh, financial stuff. Um, you know, the inability to stay committed to a person, right? Or, or if cheating happens, right? You know, there's these things that happen in our lives, right? As a, as a couple, whether you're in the dating phase or in the marriage phase, 10 years, you know, 30 years into a marriage, I think, you know, that's, that's the journey of life, you know, and the journey of life together is that we're going to face these things. Uh, we got to do it together or, or we separate, you know? Um, and then, so, so that was cool to see. Cause I, you know, that, that reminds me of just kind of an immigrant story, you know, that, um, you come to this new land, you gotta learn all this shit and you don't know shit and you only have each other to depend on. Right. And so that's, I think it makes it easier, I guess, to depend on each other. Um, but it also, yeah. At the same time, too, though, right? Is that like, like that? That's where the mentality is so different. Is because, like, you know, once I, once I'm able to do it myself, right, and I don't see that there's a need for you anymore, then it also at the same time makes it easier for me to leave you, you know. So, so there, but but you know how how their their language was, you know, it was, it was you know we're we're gonna see through this moment, you know. Right, you know, you're embarrassed about this piece, you know. Um, that's a you problem. You're that's a that's an ego problem, and then you know, for for him to be able to check himself or have his wife check him, and then him being have having the skill to uh, um, self evaluate himself, right? Uh, to to see what his wife just said to him, and then it allowed him to grow. So, I, and then right, right. I'm sure they they're successful now, as as they mentioned in that podcast. But I think. That was a real beautiful video. I think most people need to start adopting that um, that uh, that um, attitude. You know, I think it, it's hard to find a relationship like that. You know, even uh, with a, a trustworthy woman that believes in you like that, it's, it's hard to find um, that girl. Because um, you know some some are easy to leave, especially when let's say at the moment, let's say the week of his ego, just just not talking to her. Some women will leave. Uh, oh man, you're too egotistic and start fighting him. You know, like and with her, you know, he was fortunate to have um, a, part, a, a wife that was so patient with him. Yeah. Um, I mean, in a, in a relationship or any marriage, patience is going to be key to. Um, building a relationship oh shit. And, yo uh, yo what up who is this uh is this daniel daniel a little bit you a little bit too early brother <laughs> so if you can hear me i'm gonna boot you real quick <laughs> is that daniel i don't know okay um but yeah it's uh I, so let, let me ask you this so was there a point where in your life that you felt that um you kind of portrayed your family in a way i betrayed for my your own self ego um shit dude i i would say uh probably in my early 20s if you, if you in terms of feeling that kind of way right because i think yeah yeah know, like kind of just like yeah like oh man you're embarrassing me i don't want to talk to you like why'd you do that but then it really is just like at the moment and and your ego or some something was in the way like yourself uh, center was in the way, you know, like, well, you, well, you know, when like, you're, when you're young, you're dumb, right? I mean, <laughs> so in my twenties, you know, I just, I just thought I was better than my family. I don't know why <laughs> they made more money than I did, <laughs> but, um, uh, but you know, and then, and then to separate myself from them, right. To separate myself from, you know, the people who, who raised me, you know, and then, um, just hanging out with all these other dumbass motherfuckers and just throwing all my time and attention not not re not even really developing myself either, you know. I think it's just me living recklessly. Um, but that dynamic was, you know, my, my family, my family, uh, the family dynamic back then was kind of, you know, very tough for me. And then so that's why, you know, I I did act in a um, a stupid ass way. But um, but I would say, in answering your question, I would say that that time period uh, in my early twenties is when um, I guess I I betrayed my family. Um, what made you come back? Like, what was the realization? Is it because like some incident happened, or you met somebody? 
Uh, I, I think, I think the, I think, um, a real big, um, piece for me was, was, uh, my dad dying and me becoming a father and a husband and, and then, um, being the head of the house. Right. I think that really taught me, um, just how much, uh, what it takes to, to be a father, right. To be, uh, the man of the house, to be the head of the house. Right. And then so, yeah. so I, you know, after that piece, you know, I, I gained a, a different perspective on just kind of the family dynamic and how stressful and how tough that is. And, and then, um, you know, my parents doing what they're doing, you know, though at that time, right in my young 20s, I had this, you know, inflated idea that they should be this gajillionaire or, or this super successful, respectable people. And when even though, you know, you know, that's that's the. Um, the standard I put on them, but I didn't put that same standard on myself. So then, you know, and, and in lacking perspective and, and world um, experience, I think, you know, that's why they say when you when you're young, you're dumb because you, you think like, you know, everything, but you, you know, nothing. And then so that's that's when uh, I, I kind of realized that piece. Interesting. That's cool, man. Well, I um. I don't think have I met that Peter? What have you met? What I have have I met that Peter? Oh, the, the, with, with, yeah, the the young reckless. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What the fuck are you talking yeah. about? Heck yeah, so, dude. So that, you talking about that about that time period? <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, okay. Oh yeah, dude. I was, I was not in a good headspace, man. You know. Okay. Okay. <laughs> y'all, y'all enabled me. <laughs> I was like, wow. You got like, yeah, so I'm on with people that, you know, don't give a shit. I was like, oh, shit. I was like, I swear, if you're talking about, about that time, we were probably hanging out, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I was like, oh, shit. He's probably just talking about me right now, too. Oh, that's so funny. Uh no, what you know what it is is because like right like we're we're at that time period we were very eh, kind of now too right is that we were very kind of we're very uh, extrovert right we're networking hard we're trying to do stuff with our life right we're trying to make a name for ourselves and so so when I when I when I say friends right when I say the people I was hanging out with dude I, I was hanging out with a lot more people than you know just our our crew at that time you know so that's yeah, what I yeah. mean, that's what I meant. I remember at that time I was hanging out with uh, random like uh, coworkers, um, mainly coworkers to be honest. It's yeah. kind of just smoking all the time and and drinking and trying to get laid, but uh, it just never happens, dude. <laughs> I swear to God, every every go of the night was to get laid, but blue balls, every, blue every balls night, every go, night, baby. But you know what? You know what I do miss though, like. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't want to do it now, like every other weekend, like how we did before. Like just, just little hangouts, you know, little like parties. That was, that was kind of cool. Yeah. But uh, now it's just, it's, it's um, once in a while it'd be cool, but like every other weekend is, is, is a little too much. Cool. Um, what's your, yeah, what's your, what's your take on that video, right? Or, or do you wanna, did you wanna transition to mine? Um. I, I'll give a little two minute breakdown on how to the video. Um, so that video, it for me, it's um, it is about ego, man. That you gotta lower your ego down, and, and it's not about like, oh, that proves that you're like poor, right? Having a food, using food stamps, it doesn't say that you're poor and you're like a low value, right? It's just at the moment, you know, we're just in the moment and we're in the process of it, and like it also tells me, man, how important. A person that's willing to stick with you at your lowest points the how important that is oh, yeah. and uh, how important that person is to uplift you when you need it the most yeah and um, yeah man if I, if, I, if I ever find that girl man um, or that person um, in the Philippines dude. <laughs> If, it, if I do in the Philippines, man, that'd be great. If, if I can find three at least. <laughs> that'd be cool. You know, 
I think uh, to to kind of uh, add to what you said, man. I think um, you know, like in my relationship with with my wife now, you know, I think we we got married in twenty five ish, right? At twenty five, yeah, twenty six, and uh, I, I say that's the biggest thing is just being there for each other to to grow, right? You know, me teaching her stuff, she taught me a lot of stuff about myself, and then um, you know, it, it was a very humbling experience, and it, it's just one of those things where like. You know, if two people can commit to go through a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of bullshit together and you come out at the end, then you, you know, you'll see yourself and you'll see your spouse, you know, grow. And that's just, you know, such a, a beautiful experience, you know, I, that, yeah, I hope, yeah. that I hope, that uh, I hope more people get to experience. Because, yeah, like, like, um, not just that's my true, experience, man. right? Because, like, in the beginning, it was just a whole bot- bunch of maturing on my end. Um, and then, you know, my wife learning about, you know how the world works and how to be a go how to be ambitious in life um yeah. and so that's what that was right and then so now we've just kind of fused and then now we're we're a lot better now and we're still working you know the kinks here and there um but but that's the beauty of of uh committing to this long-term relationship is that we're building a, a life together and now that we have kids right our next journey is how to be a, a parent you know um and so we're we're learning that piece together, and it's, it's been a beautiful progress or process. That's that's you're right, man. Because um, without tragedy, there is no growth. And most people that just kind of touch on tragedy, it's like they get too stressed, and they're like, oh man, I'd rather go and find somebody else and just make have them make me happy. You know, like it's it's yeah. a quick getaway, and that's the problem nowadays with these relationships. Because like it's easier to find something new than work on what you already have yeah um and sometimes People, it, it, it can go both ways too if it, sometimes if it's too toxic and you know it's too toxic maybe you should leave too yeah. you know go to but, go to therapy know, first you know i think therapy is yeah i think therapy is definitely the uh the last option um yeah. if it really doesn't work but both both will have have to try. They're willing to try. You know what I mean? That's 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 what it is. Because if one is only trying, the other one's not willing to try. Man, you just you lost. You're losing. You're losing battle, bro. Because um, both of them have to try, man. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. Uh, let's go ahead and go you video before uh, um Daniel comes on. Well, what time is he supposed to come on? I think he says it's echoing. Oh shit! Yeah. I think uh. I think I might need to put on headphones, man. Okay. We have Daniel coming on in about uh, 10 minutes here. Is it really 10 minutes? God damn, dude. Our segment no, is hella time, short, dude. Time has been coming by pretty quick. Oh, damn. Okay. Well, then I'll do, my, I'll do mine real quick. I think you're going to like this one. All right. Peter's going to go with segment. All right, we're going to watch it. Did you download it or no? Yeah, I already did. All right, cool. Let's do it. Do you think there's any racism? Do you think they care? Hey, Ann, let me know if uh, it's still echoing there. Because I cannot... Uh... Okay, I think it's good right now. Okay. Hopefully. I can hear myself a little bit, but it is what it is. Oh, yeah. I, it's because I ain't got headphones on. All right, let's, let's, let's watch All that. right, dude, you're going gonna to love this one, man. All right, let's do it. Andrew Tate? I love Andrew Tate, dude. The heck? When a black billionaire meets a white billionaire, do you think there's any racism? Do you think they care? He's a billionaire, I'm a billionaire. Both our yachts are in Monaco. He's from Algeria, he stole all the gold. I'm a stock market whatever. There's no racism. The racism's for the poor people. Because if you keep the poor people divided, they can't wake up long enough to do what I did and read about how money works. Because if they do that, we're in big trouble, right? Then the slaves will wake up. You don't wanna deprogram the slaves. So you have to convince the slaves that it's not the monetary system fault that you're broke. It's not the monetary system's fault that you continue to work for a set number of dollars and the price of houses just keep going up and up and up. It's not the monetary system's fault. It's the white man's fault or the black man's fault or the Asian people's fault. Someone else's fault. I think all this stuff, feminism, racism, all these things, I think they're all control mechanisms. They have to keep the poor people fighting amongst each other because if the poor people all unite, then it's much harder to control us. Hey, yo. Man, that's nothing but facts, dude. Look, I me mean, look at Dave Chappelle. Have you heard his his uh, he one of his uh, stand ups? Uh, which one? <laughs> he was like, he was like, Donald Trump doesn't hate me. He's helping me out because I'm one of the rich. <laughs> yeah. 
something like that. It was, it was hilarious. Yeah. Um, man, that's true, man. Uh, it's just all distractions, dude. The media is distractions for us. I mean, I've, I'm pretty sure uh, we all fall into this whole distraction and, and like racism. And the funny thing that you mentioned about racism, like I usually only get racism from poor people, bro. <laughs> And I like really think about it. They're all poor people, and they're just mad about their lives. And like, they're mad that like Asian people are taking their jobs, you know. Yeah. And we're we're getting smarter. We're we're, we're being doctors and, and lawyers, and they're they're upset about it. And they use the the racism card all the time, especially um, yeah, even in middle school, bro. Like it's just like this tactic of like trying to like belittle you because yeah. Yeah. they have nothing else. You know what yeah. I mean? They just generationally filled with hate, man. It's just they, you know, yeah. you know, like so. So my so so I'm gonna I'm gonna step in because I I really want to yeah, talk go, go, go on, on this piece. Is that like um, it's it's victimhood mentality, and you know, you know, like like not to disregard racism, right? Because people are racist, but the thing is, yeah, right? It's, it's, yeah, it's there. Like like not not only racism, but then like uh, what is it? Um, I think a cognitive bias or some kind of bias. I forgot what the fuck the term is, but you know, when we when we see people, we are automatically think a certain way about that person, right? So that that yeah, yeah. that exists. But at the yeah. same time, right? Like you, right? Me as a person, I'm where I'm at today because my grandparents, right? They fled from a war torn country, didn't know the fucking language. They came here, they learned, right? They bust their ass. My parents learn, bust their ass. I'm learning and I'm busting my ass, you know, so there's obstacles yep. in your life. You know, you're, you're going to have adversity. You're going to have you're probably going to have racist people trying to hold you down. But then, you know, not not every fucking turn you go is going to be, you know, a wall, you know. And so so I think that is a product of victimhood mentality. Hey, let's blame it on racism. Let's blame it on um, um, on on other things other than me. Yeah. Right. Because like like I think. um with That's today's America, age dude. with today's age too right it's just you know we have the luxury of of um of uh uh getting a uber right transportation i don't even need to fucking own a car if i didn't want to right um you know you can have your own car you know if you wanted to you can carpool or or you can work online you can work from home um you know you can learn a lot of shit there's so much shit, fucking information that you can learn on youtube right so so there's all these resources and you know, but all we want to do is we want to expect and then expect a lot, you know, from the government. We want we expect a lot from uh, these big corporations and, and we want to do as little as possible. You know, and I think that mentality or or this age that the this this, um, I guess, prosperous age that we live in kind of, you know, entitles people like that and, and, and entitlement, too. Right. I think I think there's a lot of programs in place that entitle poor habits and that's why people stay poor and and not only that but uh, i think ultimately what gets you out of the shithole that you're in is um your values your personal values is what makes you who you are right like if you value hard work if you value working 80 hours a week if you value um self-improvement right if you value being uh if you value legacy right you, you know all these you know mindset right these wealthy mindset you know will get you to where you want to get to and and i think i think if people stop you know paying too much attention about racism and and um just pay more attention about their skill set and in and where to apply themselves i think they'll they'll be in a much better place yeah i, I agree i strongly agree man um i mean it takes one to know I me, mean, I was, I was, I was in that. I thought about that. I mean, it's part of a human mind is just to kind of be lazy and and you know not do much and just kind of point fingers, right? I think that's kind of America alone too. Um, but you know, once you start catching yourself to to do that, and you're like, whoa, that's just not me, and it's not working. Um, and learning from that, and that's where self development happens and, and switch of mentality happens because if you decide to do that much more or something different from that um person or that mindset you be surprised how much more successful you'll be just switching the mindset of not being a victim and just going head on working and being humble with it 
Yeah, yeah man, I totally agree. And that's that. That's what divides the the weak and and the, and the strong too, though. That's that's the honest truth, man. And when I see myself kind of falling into that situation, like I catch myself earlier than before before I fall too deep, you know. And obviously, I I, I know that place, you know. And I I don't like that place, you know. It's part of the comfort zone, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. So, yeah, it's, it's always good to uh, try to like you know push yourself out of it and, and and you know be different, and that's the only way for you to be successful, man. And it took years to to finally just really. I mean, I'm still haven't learned enough yet or know enough, but I, I'm definitely more aware of it for sure. Um, tight. But yeah, man, that great video, dude. I love Andrew Tate, man. That guy, <laughs> like. What you know, you know, for that, for that, I actually had two videos, two different videos. One yeah. was uh, Morgan Freeman, and then the other one, which is Andrew Tate. And I was like, "Man, I ain't got much time. I'm gonna use my Andrew Tate card." <laughs> Andrew Tate, bro. I love Andrew Tate, man. He's he's uh, he's awesome, bro. What color's your Bugatti? You got a Bugatti? <laughs> uh, oh man, but um. So I, I believe Daniel is waiting on the other one, the waiting room. Yep, I, I told him. You want to go ahead and get Daniel popping? Yeah. Daniel, what's going on? So Ooh. we have uh, Daniel Lee here on the right. Discord. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Wow, your voice is so clear. Uh, you know, wireless headset, so. Uh, Daniel, is there, is there any way to uh, put on your cam? Oh, I'm trying to figure it out, actually, because uh, I, I see... Let's look through. I'm all trying to figure this out. Camera, are you, video. Are you on the desktop or are you on mobile? I'm on desktop. Okay, so if you go down, it'll pop up. If you go, like, if you move your arrow down, like, towards... You should have, like, a camera button and then, like, a, like a spaceship. Yeah, was... Yes, sir. What up? What up? Yes. What's, yeah, going on, what's going on, guys? I like the I like the frames, dude. Hey, man, they're honestly super cheap. I keep I keep hoarding. <laughs> I have I think I have like seven different pairs because yeah. you know, some some guys get like chains or watches. I'm like, no, I'm getting glasses, dude, because yeah. these are functional for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hell yeah. That's cool. Each one for different mood, man. What what's oh, yeah, mood is this one? I mean, I got some like some wireframe ones. I got this is my latest one. And it's kind of like a you know a pop of color and personality. Oh, that's classy, dog. Like, yeah. Um. But you know, like I got I got a whole bunch. These, this is my cheap one, but I have a I have a set of Warby Parkers that I like, um, just to get me to stand out a little bit. Tight. Yeah. Well, it worked. That's the first thing yeah. I saw. I was like, whoa. Well, them, thank you. Them, thank you. Them frames. Yeah. Are those are those uh, prescription? Yeah, they're all prescription. Um, okay. You know, they're not sponsoring me, but paying glasses, P A Y N E glasses okay. dot com. I got these for like seven, eight bucks, dude. Okay. Come cool. on, sponsor Daniel. Come on, guys. Yo, hashtag sponsor me. <laughs> We're rooting for you. We're rooting for it. Um, but this is uh, everyone. This is Daniel. Daniel Lee. Uh, Daniel, can you can you um, you know, introduce yourself and you know where you're from and what you do? Sure, sure. Um, God, where do I start? Um, hmm. Hi, my name is Daniel Lee. I am an actor, filmmaker, producer, writer, whatever you need me to be in the entertainment industry. Um, but to pay the bills, I'm an IT consultant with my own IT company. So, Sweet. because we all know that being an artist awesome. does not necessarily pay the bills, at least not yet. That's true. That's true. Yep. Unless sure unless you're beautiful and on OnlyFans, then. Uh... Even, in then, even, space. <laughs> even though that's that's uh you know there's a little bit of marketing that goes with it you know it's the luck of the draw so oh, yeah but look you know i'm you know i am Hmong american born and raised in fresno california now oh. living in la so i am no stranger to the struggle sweet no love it yeah. love it so what what's something you're, you're passionate about daniel uh, what is something i'm not passionate about i mean there, there are a lot of things I'm passionate about. I think um, it, it might sound like hippy dippy, but I think really getting the reason why I do what I do, right? Because um, I'm not just an actor filmmaker. I'm also kind of an advocate for representation, but mm. but not just within the entertainment industry, but within our community. Um, with with Hmong folks, we haven't really seen Hmong folks on stage or on the screen. So I'm really big on 
really getting people to try things. I think okay. um, I, I think I, I do a lot of outreach on making sure that people get comfortable with the uh, possibility of seeing themselves on screen or on stage. And it all starts with the idea of why not? You know, because before, you know, right now, the, the usual thing that that always gets pushed around in the community is you got to be a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, that kind of thing. Yeah, IT. It's, yeah, well, <laughs> IT, even that, IT, IT is still kind of a newer field. Um, but those are only ever presented as options because they've seen a success story. So there was at one point the first Hmong doctor, the first Hmong nurse, social worker. So we really just have to kind of open up the door and be like, hey, like, I'm not saying you need to, you know, I'm not saying that you need to follow me on this path. I just want to let you know that the door is open. You can choose to go through it if you want. I want you to know you have options. So let me ask you this. So let's just say there's um, an actor or a filmmaker that wants to be in the industry, like, like, if he comes to you and says, hey, Daniel, I, I want to make this film, like, what what are your tips? Or how could you guide him or help him, um, you know? Him or her. Do, yeah, yeah. His, yeah. his first film or whatever it may be. Well, if they, if, if any, because I, I have an open door policy. So every, anybody who wants to, um, who is interested in entertainment, if they want to pursue it, if they want to just kind of like dip their toes in the water, they can feel free to reach me on social media and just ask me questions. Um, I'd be happy to oblige because I wish I had that resource. But let's say, for example, um, you know, a new monk film, um, aspiring filmmaker comes up to me and say, hey, I want to make this film, blah, 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 what do you do? I would set time with them. I told, I would just like with anything else hey let's set up a time let's do a zoom meeting let's talk about you and what you want to do because there have been some people that approach me and say i want to make this film but like you know it's we're just doing it for shits and giggles i'm like oh i don't know if i'm allowed to to say bad words on here oh dude you this is just just don't say sex don't say oh, rape what else what else Got it. The R word and the S word. Be yeah, yeah. About it. Uh, be I'll bleep those out when I edit this. <laughs> yeah, but don't say uh, those two words. <laughs> yeah, don't two uh, words you said. <laughs> yeah, it's well, you know, like there have been people who who um, approach me and say, "I want to make this movie kind of, you know, just for kicks, right? It's nothing serious." I'm like, "Well, it's not serious." And I always try to dig a little bit deeper, try to figure out what's going on. Because when you say it's not serious, is are you not taking it seriously? Or are you trying to protect, you shield yourself from the idea of failure, right? It's just like, if I set low expectations, then if it fails, it's, you know, it's no problem. I was like, because I think anything worth doing is worth committing to. Yeah. You know, if oh, yeah, you're going to make your first film, like, go for it. Like, I want to support you in any way you can. But if you don't believe in the project, why should I? I, I, so, I, I really, I really, you know, vibe with that mindset. You know, because yeah. is is when you second guess yourself, it's like dog, don't don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Because you yeah. you you had the idea to to fucking do it in the first place, you know. Yeah. And like you said, commit to it, right? See yeah. you what you're capable of. See where your bottom line is, and then work yeah. from that, right? But if you're yeah, like, because... oh, I'm just doing it for fun, and you know, it's it's for shits and giggles, and if I fail, then you know, whatever, you know. But but that's not how yeah. you should you know live your life, you know. Yeah, like, why would you half-ass anything? Go yeah. for it. Now, if it doesn't turn out the way you do, there's oh, because you committed 100% of your time and energy to it, if it doesn't work out, there are lessons to be learned. And oh, yeah. also, you start to you start to understand whether, this, whether or not this is something you want to do, right? Like, if I wanted to be a professional wrestler and I went to, I went to wrestling, uh, wrestling training and I put all on the line after I was done with my training. If I decided, uh, you know, like it's not for me, then that's totally fine because I did the thing and I yeah. made conscious choice not to, as opposed to going in, just, you know, putting like 50% energy all the time and then deciding not to. I was like, well, is that a truthful, is that a truthful decision? Or are you just shielding yourself from the embarrassment or the feeling of failure? Do you what's what's the number one thing that you feel like stops people from pursuing um, an idea? You think it's like financial situations, 
Is it commitment issues? Oh, dude, it, it's, it goes, it's even more basic than that. It's just fear. Because every story, every story that somebody has wanted to tell, there is something about that story that resonates with them, right? Um, whether they believe the character, they think they share, they think they share a commonality with the character or the story in general. There's there's a part of them that resonates within that story, and the reason why stuff fails is just because it's a fear. It, you got to be vulnerable and put yourself out there, right? And so when you're, let's say. Let's say I'm pitching a film. Let's say I'm pitching a film to producers, right? And I say, oh, I have this story, blah, blah, blah. If I, I, I owe it to myself to give 100%. There is, you know, and I'm saying this from experience, there is a small part of me that is afraid that if they say no, they don't just say no to the project, they say no to me. Yeah, yeah. Like they're, they're saying, oh, you're Pretty not personal, worthy yeah. of us putting money up front. And so that hurts. That hurts. Take it. You take it personal. Lie. It hurts. Yeah. You know, it, it hurts. You got to take it. You know, take you it know who I am. You know who I am. Yeah, you know, <laughs> Your so, loss. Your fucking loss. Yeah. That's why. I don't need like, you. You need me. Exactly. You that's have me. To, you that's have me. To really, <laughs> you have to really understand all of this because understanding it does not make it hurt any less. Right. So. When you understand it, you know you can maybe start to learn about how to deal with these emotions. I mean, God, yeah. everything is about like mental health and emotion stuff. Um, because as artists, we have to be in touch with our emotions because we are a reflection of the human condition. Yeah, storytellers. You know, Star Wars. Um, oh my God! Yeah, oh you, yeah know, you can find even even like stuff in like Avatar, Avatar: Way of Water, like there's a human element to it and that's why it resonates so well with people is because even though this is like an alien race there are human qualities about it yeah hey, hey daniel yeah. How, how long you been uh doing what you're doing oh well i've been living in la eight years but i've oh, been oh. performing so i've been a professional performer meaning i've gotten paid even if it's like 10 bucks um i've gotten paid to be a performer for about 10 years and I've performed in general like 12, 13 years now. Yeah. Cool, man. Started off doing opera in, in Fresno, of all places. And now I'm in film and television. That's right, dude. Opera, so huh? so I, I checked out your IMDb. Uh, it oh, looks boy. like you got three oh, short boy. films. Uh, uh, I mean, more. There's, some, like, there's a short film I'm working on right now, actually. Yeah. Um, but it's not on IMDb yet because... We haven't even started pre-pro yet. Okay. Um, I'm finishing up the script, but it should be done by the end of this, you know, by next week. Uh, and I'm hoping to shoot it. I'm hoping to start restart the crowdfunding campaign, shoot it, and get it ready to release by the end of the year. Okay, so cool, man. It's, it's I saw that one too. Fun. Yeah, the uh, the movie that you wanna, that or that you're you're trying to fund is uh, Me Too. Yep. Me too. Yeah. With okay. uh, with John B. Ta, uh, some people might know as B. Monkey, but um, okay. yeah, he he would be in it, and so Who trying to he? make it happen, man. John B. Ta, he. Uh, is, I think if you uh, saw him, if you saw him, you you know him for sure, dude. He's in the he would, OG he um, Mong movies that you probably saw when you were a kid, and yeah, he had this Whoa. film called Audio. I'll you know, show you later. Came out two thousand. Yeah, he's okay. he's he's um. He's a veteran in the in the Hmong American because I don't want to say Hmong specifically like, yeah. because it's very specifically Hmong American films. Um, so he worked with like ST Universal Studios Sutala back in early two thousands, um, and so he's kind of he's he's a long time veteran. He's been doing this stuff for a while, and so um, when I came up with the idea for Me Too, I was like, you know, I really want to bridge the gap between generations bridge the gap between generations because so what i've noticed a lot um is this idea that like well we can do it on our own i'm like we can but wouldn't it be cool if we actually you know extended the invitation out to uh Laura, like the elders and yeah. really try to let them know it's like like we're not so different yeah. i think i think that's a cool concept man i i, I think you know like like um like the idea that uh, Hollywood should be telling our stories, I I think that's, I think that's kind of you know a weird 
you know, philosophy. It's, it's, I, it's I, difficult, right? Yes. Yeah. And the thing is, the the thing is, like, it, it's a common trope. It's a common saying in the entertainment circles where it's like, well, if we don't tell the story, our stories, who's going to, right? And we know, like, we have evidence of who's going to tell our stories. Um because if they see it, if they see it, they see a money-making opportunity. They're gonna jump on it. I mean, God, this is me manifesting. But like, I want to be on the short list of people that they tap to be like, hey, we're thinking about about making a Sunisa Lee biopic film. I'm like, cool. Y'all better talk to me, or at least if not me, my among friends that are working in the entertainment industry, because like that that's our community. You know, of course. Yeah, dude. Yeah, get Sunisa's permission, but you know, like I want, I want there to be like some sort of like community. Uh, I don't know, like a short list of community names to be like, hey, we want to do, we want to work with something with either a story or a character that is somewhat pivotal to the Hmong community. We yeah, want to be able to reach out to the, the, the that, community. That, you know, this this you know, what we're doing right is is uh, that's how we're going to preserve our culture you know is through film yep. and through these creative processes for the next generation you know and, yeah. and i think like that's that's where like we would have to as a community um combine our funds and and really push for that for these you know creative pieces to be made you know so that way it's put in like a, a vault somewhere and to show our kids you know hey this is yeah, who we are well, this is what we've done this is how far we've come and these are the the Hmong stories that you need to know because so, this, this is where we came from you know yeah definitely and i think it's really important for us to be able to tell you know us Hmong americans like i don't know about you guys but i am second generation so i'm the first generation to be born here um second generation Hmong american and our experience is different from our parents yeah like there's like we all know it we we should just make peace with it but i think it's important for us to tell our story from a place of honesty first before we start trying to tell somebody else's because then we're just trying to we're just trying to be enough for our parents yeah but the truth is like well then who's going to tell our story are we waiting for our kids to do that how fair is that to them you know we have to be able to put in the work you know like you said with like investing in our own community we have to yeah. build like an economic mindset of like we are supporting our own of supporting our own but also also demanding better quality right so if if you're if you make a movie that's that isn't good i will still try to support however <laughs> I'm not gonna throw. I'm not gonna throw. Well, man, dog, that that two-hour yeah. film was cringy, man. <laughs> you know, like it's it's what you know, it's like one of your things. Like, um, you know, when you when you go support a friend at a show, right? And they're like, "Oh, thank you for coming." It's like, "Hey, I'm happy to help out." What did you think? We could talk about that later. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't want. I don't want to give you my review right now because I'll be honest yeah. with you later. But right now, you're still. It's it's not the right time for me to talk to you about whether or not it was good. Um, so building that economic system so that we can start saying, Hey, we want more like, yeah. um, like two years ago, my production company, we did a, a fake, a fake dating show. You know, it was just more of like a concept trailer called, um, called just for love. Um, and we did everything the way we would like a professional, uh, I don't want to even say professional, but like a, an expensive let's say that an expensive project so we reached out to destiny we said hey destiny can there's a project we want to do can we get rights we sent paperwork we talked to yasmin we we did everything the way a hollywood production would um and we put the work in and i i think i'm proud of it i'm proud of it it, it looks good um some people were some people were receptive to it. They were like, oh, man, I want to watch this. And, of course, there are going to be people who didn't like it. That's fine. It's, it's Where can we find everyone. this? It's on YouTube. Um, just for Love? Should you use the word Just for Love dating show or something? Uh, yeah, Just for Love or to make it easy, Just for Love Good Zoo Studios. That's the name of my Good Zoo? Send, yeah, uh, send, uh, send, uh, send us the link, dude. I want to check it out. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna do it yeah. right now. Cause... Yeah, be because uh, we have uh, we have a uh, virtual dating uh, show coming up in the next uh, few weeks. Um, oh, really? it's cool. Yeah, it's gonna be eliminations. Uh, it's gonna be super fun. Um, we're gonna 
it's going to be more of the bachelor. We're going to focus on the guys. Um, yeah. I mean, we're eventually going to shift over to the girls, but we're going to have the guys be the bachelor and, and have uh, the girls be the candidates for them. Um, just because uh, we, we want to focus more on the Asian um, mental health. Oh, dude, and I'm all for uh, help young younger men um, be more uh, confident in themselves and just have fun, man. And like, just talk to women and um, yeah. like, like I think want to ask you too, like, you know, uh, how's your riz? That's what the kids <laughs> say nowadays. See, I'm old. I'm old, dude. So I don't even like. I how how would you throw your riz? What's that? How would you throw your riz? It would. You know, what riz mean, is. Oh, I mean, I just learned about it, but... Is it a new is, dance? <laughs> yeah, is it a new dance? I'm looking on TikTok and I can't find it. Um, no, uh, for those of old folks that need help, um, like me, Riz is short for charisma, but it's... it's. Yeah. Wow. I mean, how would I throw... I don't know if I do. Like, I'm, I'm very old school. Like, I try to be as... I try to be as much of, like, an old school gentleman as possible. So, you know, if I see an attractive woman, like, I'll just... I'll, I'll, I'll try to make conversation. I'll try to make conversation um, because I understand that as a, as a woman, as a woman, whether you're single or not, in today's world, it can get kind of intimidating. It's... There are a lot of guys that approach you. So I want... My main thing is I just want to make him feel comfortable. So, no, I tell you, so, I tell you, man, you know, I, I, I have no riz, you know, back in the day, my riz was just, um, you know, drinking, getting drunk, go to the club yeah. and just dance behind chicks. Yeah, I mean, look, <laughs> if that works, I've had my you know days too. <laughs> I've had my days doing that too, where, you know, like you, you get drunk and then you, it's liquid courage, but really you're just like, <laughs> your, your sense of knowing better. For me, it was gone, alcoholism. So like, <laughs> yeah. You know, um, but no, like I, I, I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I have any riz whatsoever. I just try to have conversation. Okay, so uh, give me, give me an example. Give me the first line you say to a girl, <laughs> like, "Hey, girl, what's up?" Okay, like, well, what, I'll, tell, I'll tell you, line? I'll tell you a story of the last time I tried <laughs> okay. whatever. Right. So I was in okay. Minnesota. Good to me. I was in Minnesota and I went to Unison, and of course, you know, had had. I don't want what, to what's, what's Unison again? Unison is a, a group meetup or something, right? No, no. Unison is a bar. It's a restaurant oh. bar in the Twin Cities. Okay. Um, uh, and so I go, I don't want to say I had one, but I had like five too many drinks. Oh, yeah. Um, I, yeah, and... that's definitely some courage. Sounds about right. Sounds about right. Yeah, there's this there's this girl who was at a bar. She was waiting to get uh, waiting for drinks. I'm like, hey, like, and I, I was just honest because this is just what I do now. I was like, Excuse me, ma'am. I think you are incredibly gorgeous, and I'd love to take you out on a date sometime. I'm from out of town. I'm leaving on Monday, but maybe you can grab lunch. And funny enough, uh, she responded. She was like, well, why wait? It was Friday. And she was like, well, why wait till Monday? I'm like, okay, let's go. Let's do this. So, you know, had a lunch date the next day. Got her number and everything. Uh, And funnily enough, apparently I talked with her sisters as well, and they were like interviewing me. They're like, oh, why should our sister go on a date with you? I was like, because she doesn't know me. I think she should get to know me. Um, yeah, you know, I'm I'm old school, dude. Like I am Itu Tolo. Right there with you, brother. You, um, so right how did that you. relationship end up? Did she just uh, get free we, lunch we or what? Uh, no, we split it. We split the bill, actually. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, you split damn, the bill, split does that the mean? Bill. Does that mean that you guys are not gonna fuck? Uh, I mean, that was that was never that was uh, that was never the intention. Like, dude, who's trying to fuck after a lunch date? I mean, yeah. I'll be down after if you. Was down. Nah, nah, it's uh, me yeah. back then. I would have yeah. done it any time, anywhere. Dude. I, I told you, man. I'm old school. Dude. Right like, I, like the first date. The first date. I usually for a first date, I take people. I take girls on a coffee date. Because there's no frills, right? No frills. There's like the stakes are low. You know, we go, we try yeah, to have yeah. a conversation. No pressure, if you feel yeah. it, great, cool. We stay. If we're not feeling it, you could leave because it's a coffee date. You know? Yeah. But ideally if things go well, then you're like, hey, can, like maybe we continue this like over drinks or you know, whatever the case may be. The first date really okay. is just an introduction. So what are the steps for you? Like the third day, and then you, you know, do you make out with them? Like what's, what's your step for them to like be your girlfriend? 
Oh God! Like, like to get into a relationship. Like, look, I was in a relationship for ten years, dude. Oh so damn, dude! For ten years. So, like, for a whole decade, I was off the market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, that's, I was off the yeah, market. Okay. And then once I, once I got out of that relationship, I looked at the seat. The the seat. It's different. Yeah, it's different. It used to be yeah. like, oh, yeah. I like you. We'll yeah. go on like three, four dates. I'm like, do you want to be boyfriend, girlfriend? Cool. Now it's it's a lot different, especially uh, also at my age. Um, people have their own lives, their responsibilities. So you you have to try to make a conscious effort to carve out time for each other. So I, I, I mean, the answer for me is I don't know yet because I have been single since that 10 year relationship. Because okay, so to... you're single now, right? Yeah, I'm single now. I've oh, okay, been, okay, okay. I've been taking time to work on myself. That's what I do. That's how I do. Yeah. Hey, would you uh, would you ever? Um, are you open to the idea of uh, finding a wife overseas? Um, no, cause like, cause plenty of people, my mom included, have suggested that. But um, I. Well, what about I, the What about the Philippines, man? What about the Philippines? Uh, it's the. Um, me being in the industry that I'm in, uh, okay. it's it's very it's it's very different um, to to where like you know that the ideal the ideal career path, career path is I work on a film or television show, but that means I'm going to be gone for weeks, maybe months at a time, um, and of course any long distance relationship would work, but there are so many small cultural differences that would make it just a little. You know, a little too difficult, I think, for me. Not to say it's not to say it's impossible or I'm completely closed off to the idea. It's just going to be a really uphill battle. You know, for, no, for I that think uh, I think Filipinos are down, dude. They're down for anything, dude. <laughs> I mean, you know, I've got a lot of Filipino friends, but if you're talking about like like overseas, you know, it's just like anyone. And I think the I think the power the power dynamic really can be unfair. Okay. It can be unfair, you know. So I'm like, ah, I want, I want to be fair, because it's not just for me. It's also this person who's going to be my partner as well. So, so that's yeah. very thoughtful of you. I didn't, uh, I didn't think about that at all. You got it. <laughs> you got to be thoughtful, man. Like, like, you know, the, when you get older, you kind of have to. It, the world has grown to be more than just me. You know, I have to really be considerate of everybody else around me in cool. whatever I do. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, nobody yet, yeah. but look, if anybody's listening, they want to hit me up. My DMs are open for that, too. Hey, man, you might be in the next dating show with us, man. What are you talking about? You can mm, me, I got to call my agent dude. first, though. Like, my agent's got to say okay to it and everything, so. That's <laughs> what. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know. That's cool, man. Um, what? How long have you been single again? Uh, I've been single uh, about, like, Four years now. Four years? Oh wow! Yeah. Um, that's that's been a while. Yeah, yeah. It's not um, like I haven't tried. Like I've got on, I've I've got on, um, plenty of dates, but you know, it just it just ends up it hasn't worked out just yet. Um, because I think my standards, what I'm looking for, are a little bit different now. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Interesting. Um, that's cool, man. Um, last last question. Um, uh, but um. How how big is your dick, and uh, <laughs> and the size matter to you? Uh, wow! Um, what did you like to know? Welcome to the live stream, Daniel. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the that, show, dude. That is a privileged information. Um, <laughs> it's it's big enough. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, does yeah, size yeah. matter to me? I mean, what what am I gonna do about it? <sighs> so yeah. funny, dude. This is who I am, right? This is who I am. I'm not. There's nothing I can do to change it. I'm not getting surgery. I'm not taking any special pills. Like, I am who I am. Yeah. That's fair, man. That's that's, <laughs> that's what... like the, the the smoothest way I can think of to dodge that question. <laughs> Yeah, it's big enough, man. It's big enough. Yeah, so big I... enough. Look, I haven't heard any complaints, so that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, man, have you have you uh, deal with any uh, like racism? Have you encountered any racism like recently or at all in your life that especially especially with you being in the uh, industry? 
Yeah, yeah. And like, oh, man. It's, it's kind of new. It's interesting. So like, like, like uh, I mean, I've encountered a, a good amount of racism, but then it's nothing been... It's it hasn't been anything life threatening, thankfully. Just because you know, look, I'm a six foot tall dude. Uh, I'm a I'm a heavy set guy, so usually if someone wants to step up to me, they gotta think twice about it. Oh yeah, man, he's from Fresno, dude. Watch out, dude. Uh, I've, I've, got, dude I've been telling people big. like, I like I lived I lived in Van Nuys, which is like the central part of the valley up here. But people, it has a reputation for being kind of rough. <laughs> and, yeah, you know, I tell yeah, people yeah. like, yeah, I'll go I'll go out and like three in the morning to walk my dogs the past. They're like, oh my God, are you okay? It's dangerous, isn't it? I'm like, dude, I, I grew up on the south side of Fresno. This is nothing to me. Yeah. Yeah, uh, if you're out three a.m. while walking a dog, I'll probably think you're on drugs or something, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'd be, I'd be scared yeah, of that man. guy. <laughs> that guy's yeah, scared yeah, of the yeah, guy um, at 3 a.m. with dogs. What the fuck yeah. is he doing? <laughs> yeah, but you know, like it's, it's, there, there's a certain privilege for being this tall and this big where people have to think twice. But there have been a couple of times, like uh, shortly, I think the night, the night that Donald Trump uh, was elected president, um, I went to go get gas and there were these two dudes in this like red Ford pickup truck. It was like an 80, like, you know, 85 Ford pickup truck. Did they seem they were... poor? What's that? Did they seem poor? I don't know. I can't judge them based off their appearance. I wouldn't say they're poor because you know they're living in L.A., um, so everybody's poor here. <laughs> but um, did they? Are they? Do they look rich? No, uh, no. These, these were like country boys. They're not right. Lower, the lower middle class at best. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, and I've seen you know. Look, growing up in Fresno, I grew up poor as well. So like, I've seen these kinds of people before. Um, yeah, and yeah, so, yeah. But I went to the gas station. I was getting gas, and these guys were like hooting and hollering because they were celebrating because Trump, Trump was elected president. Um, and I felt like you just kind of feel the energy of like some, like people have their eyes on you. Yeah. And I had been hearing, I'd been hearing uh, about about like some of the things that are happening around Southern California where like Asian women or like older Asian guys oh, yeah. were that, getting yeah, that time. Yeah. harassed and attacked. And so I was like, hmm. But then, um, then once I looked back at them, they kind of, they kind of like shifted their focus away from me. Um, and that was the last. That was like the last time there was a potential violent incident. Um, you know, but as far as like, as far as like microaggressions, I've had that my whole life. Like I used to work at a big blue box retailer in Fresno um, that sells electronics. I won't say their name. But even down to like structural stuff, I was up for, I was um, in the running for a promotion and five minutes before my interview for the promotion, I had already heard them talking about like, yeah, we're so like, we can't wait to, we can't wait to promote this guy. And I, the guy that they ended up promoting hadn't even interviewed yet. So I'm like, oh, like y'all already know, you guys already know you're going to, you're going to promote that white guy over me. So Nah, I'm good, man. Like, I don't need to. I don't need to waste my time with the interview. So I removed myself. How and... how how um how has race uh um played in in you getting roles, right? Because because uh, you mentioned you're, you're an actor too. Yeah. Um, how uh, how does it... that affect that piece? I mean, it's I don't. I can't say for sure because I. You know, I have high, I have a lot of respect for casting directors. I've done casting director work myself, so I understand the choices, um, the process, and what goes on to it. So I don't want to say that there's anything wrong with it. I think it's more along the lines of the stories that are available to us, right? Because um, there's a, there's a bias that people that some people are are aware of and some people are not, which is like, oh yeah, cool. Well, I have a story. I have I have a rom com. Okay, well who's who? When people say rom-com, what's the first kind of, what's the race that comes to mind immediately when you think of the, the leading people? And it's typically a white person, just because it's what you're used to. If you ask that same question over in like Hong Kong or China, then they'll think they'll think of a Chinese person. So there's a bias to it. Do I, do I know if it affects me? I don't know. I, like, I can't be for certain because they're... 
there are decisions that are made that I'm not privy to, you know, whether it's financial, whether it's like, oh, well, w this person knows this person, so I'm going to hire that person instead. There are so many other elements that can't be, it's not fair to just say, oh, it's because of race. Um, right, right. It's like it's K drama, you can only really cast like K Korean guys. Yeah. Yeah, Korean yeah. Folks, or, um, you know, and so it's, you know, look. Look, I'm I'm making that short that short film me too. I'm not gonna cast an old white guy. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm not gonna yeah. cast an old white guy. Uh, a too. white shaman. <laughs> yeah, in you the know, background. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, not just not to say that you know. We like, need the diversity happen. hires. We want to get a few black people, a few Mexican people in here. Uh, and uh, you know, I think what's what is necessary in order to correct those things yeah. is. You know, we need more writers and producers yeah. of color. Like we need people of color in decision-making positions where they can say, eh, "That's not quite right. Let me, let me get a little more. Let me, let me get a little bit more diversity. Let me think of what is reflective of the actual world we live in." Right? Like, for example, Friends. It's like six white people, but it was it was I can't remember the show it was ripped off of, but it was originally a black show that had six black characters. Interesting. Um, it was like the year before, the year before. Um, I was going to say In Living Color, but no, that's a sketch show. But um, it's well documented. So if you look it up, like you can see, you can see documentation. You can actually see, I think, the pilot episode of that show that came out before Friends did, which was essentially stolen to be Friends. Interesting. And I wish that's that cool. that were uh, as... Uh, a singular occurrence, but I mean, we've all seen the show Kung Fu back in the day with David Carradine, and that yeah. was stolen from Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee was supposed to play that character. He he wrote the idea, but the, the studio, I think it was CBS, took that and they made it their own. So oh. we got to have we got to have people of color in those positions at studio at every level. We have to have more diversity and equity. You know, not just people of color, but also women, uh, trans people as well. Trans people, uh, non-gender conforming, um, everybody, you know, you know, humanity is on a spectrum and we got to make sure everybody's accounted for. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. That's cool, man. Um, so what, what do you think your strength is at in a, as a, um, you know, filmmaker, like a directing, casting, product, Ooh, producer, I mean, what do you think your strength is? I mean, what am I good at? Uh, that's for everybody else to decide. But what do I like doing? Um, I, of course, acting is going to be my first, my mm. first and foremost thing. But I think, I think my skill set is also can serve producing very well. Um, I'm always on the lookout for like new actors, new directors, new even like musicians, even musicians, because I I want to see, I want to see where I can kind of plug my people. Right. So yeah. if you're a singer, I'm like, I want to, even if, even if I'm not, not listening to your stuff, I'll repeat, I want to have like the catalog in my mind of like, Hey, we need somebody that's like a singer songwriter. Um, then cool. Like I know a couple of people. I know Ma, Ma Vu, Ma Ye Vu, uh, Tu Feng from San Diego. Um, I, I want to have this catalog so that if Hollywood were ever to be like, we want something more cool, call me. I've I've got the community. I've got the list of people. Um, so I think actor first, producer second, um, everything else, writer, director. It's all kind of out of necessity. You did you uh, go to school for um, acting? Did you go to theater or, or anything like that? Um, I did go. I did go to school for acting. Um, I'm actually a college dropout. So um, I went to school. I was I had taken some acting classes. Interestingly enough, I wanted to be a director first. I was gonna come out to LA in 2007 to uh, go to LA Film School, but once I saw the tuition, I was like, "Yeah, yeah I don't think this is yeah, it's like it's gonna happen for me." A semester or something like that. What's that? It's like 50k a semester. Yeah, essentially. And I and I had asked them, I was like, "Well, can I like work a part-time job or something?" They're like, "No, you're gonna be too busy with schoolwork to to hold a job." So uh, I was like, okay, well, this, I guess this ain't just, this just ain't gonna happen. But you know, came back to Fresno, felt kind of defeated. But then I saw a couple classes over at Fresno City College. I'm like, you know, let me try it. Made one student film, and I was like, oh, this is kind of trash. Um, 
maybe I need to learn how to be an actor. Maybe I need to learn how to be an actor so that I could direct actors a little bit better. But And I fell in love with it. I fell in love with it, but at the same time, I was still taking music classes and I started doing opera and it all just kind of culminated, rolled into the snow, the snowball of like, hey, you really want to do this art thing? So I um, never got to finish college, but I, I kept performing. So I was doing musical theater, I was doing opera, Shakespeare in the Park. Um, you know, I was in like two short films. Um, it, and then eventually it's you kind of feel like you hit a, a little bit of a ceiling. And then I decided, hey, I got to go to L.A. Um, I got to tr- I, I owe it to myself. I owe it to anybody else who wants to try to try it. Cool, dude. Yeah. yeah that's, the, that's the biggest thing, dude, is just taking that leap of faith in yourself and um, just yeah. go full out, you know? Yeah. I mean, and Frankie knows this because I, I met Frankie. Um, I met Frankie at like a networking event down here and... Was it the New Year's event? Oh, God, it was. It was. It was a couple things. Like okay. I, I can't remember what it was, but um, yeah. And I've had conversations with Frankie about like, I'm. Yeah, Frankie knows this. I'm super loud out here in LA. Like I, I try to be the Monga. I, my license plate for my car is P U A S Y O G. Boy, y'all. Um, <laughs> just so that if there are Hmong people there, they would see it. They're like, oh. Oh, that's interesting. That's yeah, why I have yeah. this. Like, I don't, you know, I'm an atheist, but I still I wear this because this is one of the things that's like, oh, like you're Hmong, unapo- sure. yeah, yeah, unapologetically Hmong. Because some people have seen this, like, oh, oh, my friend has that. They're Hmong. I'm like, yeah, same here. Tight. Yeah, um, you know, because it's it's hard. Like, just coming to LA outside of the industry, like coming to LA for any reason feels very scary because you know usually there's no com- you don't feel a sense of community because i've met so many Hmong people here in la there's like oh i didn't know Hmong people were here i'm like yeah we're here but we're also of the kind of people that are like oh we'll keep to themselves we'll just be a little quiet and i'm like nah dude like i'm loud i'm loud so that people know that we're here yeah dude. um loud so and proud like, loud and proud i gotta i gotta i got this I keep saying I'm, I'm old because I, I want to be the old school. Do uh, you guys know what a chot no chot was? No idea. Like a gathering, right? Kind of. The chot no chot was like the MC, but like back in the day, the chot no chot was is like the, the community representative, right? So if you yeah. came to my town, I would say, hey, come talk to me. I'll show you around, blah, blah. Thank and I, I try to live by that even today of like, if anybody wants to come to LA just to visit or if they think they want to move here, call me if i can't house you i will try to help i'll try to find a place for you or you know like i'll show you around i'll give you recommendations whatever you need i'm here for you daniel is the guy if you want any tips i'm um, moving to la as a Hmong creator right well i is that, is that it i've helped I, so my roommate right now um i met him online because he's an actor as well and yeah. i was like oh yeah i'm just trying to meet with actors i met him when i came to minnesota and he was like yeah i was thinking about moving to la and so i was like hey dude like if you need me to help you move from minnesota to la just let me know we had been drinking that night so i'm like overly generous <laughs> a couple of days later a couple of days later he calls me he's like hey so like about your offer i'm like damn it Did uh, I see that? <laughs> Yeah, so I was like, you know what? Pay for my flight, we'll do it. And so he did. I flew out. We drove. We drove the three something days back to LA. Oh yeah, dude. You know the the biggest thing about about what you guys are doing is is uh, you guys are being pioneers. You know, and, and you sometimes, know, you know, it's not uh, it's not sexy. You know, being a pioneer. It's not you gotta, sexy. It, the struggle is struggle, real. Yeah. And there are. There are days when you're when you are left wondering like, uh, is this worth it? Is this worth it? Yeah. But it all comes back down to like, you gotta love it, you know, because yeah. if at the end of the day, you know, and it's easier now because we do a lot of self tape auditions, so we just yeah. record from home. But back in the day, at least when I when I first moved here, you drove to every audition. Yeah. So if after a full day of going like to like three, four different aud- auditions all across LA, you're tired, you're, you're tired and everything. If you still, if you would rather do something else, and this is what I tell people as well, if you'd rather do something else, do that. 
because this work, this what we do is too tiring, too exhausting, too heartbreaking for it to be your second choice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All I want you to do is to, is decide, I want to do something, go for it. If, if you tell me, hey, Daniel, acting's not for me. I think I'm going to move back home. That's okay, dude. That's okay. As long as, as long as you're okay with that decision, you gave it your shot. It ain't for you. That's fine. You know? Um, yeah, you, you gotta love it. I, I that's, that's you, you, you gotta be about it. You know, yeah. there, there's no, uh, what is it? Uh, there's no fake it till you make it. You just gotta yeah. be it. You gotta be about it. It's, you know? Uh, who somebody said it online. It's, it's a great quote. It's not fake it till you make it. It's, it's face it till you make it. Like you got, you got, like you got to put in the work, you know, um, with actors, I'm like, it ain't enough to just show up. You have to be prepared. You have to be ready. So take your classes, take your classes, do the networking stuff, go meet with other people, but like take your classes because no matter how ready, I mean, no matter how excited you are, if you can't do the work, there's no point. So let, let me ask you this, Daniel. Um, so I know you're pretty, um, you know, pretty well connected uh, as in, in the um, Los Angeles monk community alone. So, have you thought about uh, doing meetups, or I mean, like maybe doing like maybe the sessions uh, to help the monk community out in in the Los Angeles area? Um, well, so I I don't know because there, there's already a lot on my plate. It would be it would be it would be difficult to maintain like meetups and all that stuff just because like it's already so far however there are organizations here that are already doing that so like the long beach uh long beach um Mon community center i believe um they, those guys are a big resource they do a lot for the community with like their gang, not gangs program um they have like Mon literacy courses they they are the organization that organizes the long beach Mon new year that happens every yeah. year yeah um so instead of trying to instead of trying to like do my own thing i'd rather collaborate and be like hey what do you guys need i'd love to help out in some way um just because like you know like we all gotta we all got to play to our strengths and my strength is not in necessarily organizing but it's in it's it's in um uh i don't know i don't want to say inspiring because that's kind of cheesy but like i i pump the gas you know, I, I pumped the gas for, for everybody else who's driving. So I was like, okay, what do you need? Do you need me to put out the word? Do you guys want me to, you know, reach out to my connections? Like I did the LA Monk New Year in 2020, like right yeah. before the pandemic hit. That's um, pretty successful. It was successful, yeah. I thought we were going to get like maybe 50 people, but I think we, I think my, we my team. Whole, told whole house. Yeah, we packed the whole house. Like my my team told me, we had like over two hundred people show up. Wow. Yeah, and we had we had service members from the military that were up in Twenty Nine Palms, all the way down to San Diego. We had people from like Fresno, Sacramento, come through as well, um, and it was great. You know, I'm I'm looking forward to doing it again. I'm definitely gonna need a bigger team, uh, but I want to do it again because I want me selfishly. I want the industry to take notice. I want the industry to be like, oh, what's going on? Fingers crossed. I want Brenda Song to be there. Like, Brenda Song has gotten a lot of flack from the community, and I I want to reach out to her and say, hey, you know what? You like, it doesn't matter what people say. You are a part of this community. You have a right to be part of this community. You know, if she wants to, if she wants to come through, I will I will prepare a VIP area, whatever the case may be. Like, I want to make sure she feels welcomed. Um, as part of the community, so um, and then you know I want the industry to notice because I want the industry to start investing in our community as well because we deserve it. What do you think is going to take us to get noticed? Or like uh, just just one person? Is it? No, it's a whole community. Like, it's it's not enough for just one person to be because you know one person can't be representative of a whole ethnic group but we want to keep showing up we want to we want to stay top uh, stop stay top of mind right like for example sunisa we can't it's it's not fair for her to have the whole community on her shoulders you know who, that's why who, I who, is, who is this sunisa that you've been kind of mentioning you don't know oh boy you about to get canceled uh, dude 
god. <laughs> who, who, who is she? The first or that person? Mogul Olympian. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. The first Mogul Olympian gold medalist, silver medalist. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, she's she's great, you know. Um, but you know, it's 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 a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure to have on 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 her shoulders at that age too. That's why, like for me, like my big brother instinct comes in. It's like, hey, yo, 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 don't bother her. If you got questions, throw it to me. Fine, I can handle it. You know, um, I'm older. I'm a man, so there's a male privilege as well. Um, but for her, it, you know, like I wish for her success. I don't want her to have to worry about representing a whole community. Um, you know, by Ying Sao Lor, like. She was she was great as well. Like she does, uh, she represents the Hmong community as a whole, but specifically to Hmong Blana, and I thought that was great. Um, dude, Hmong women are fucking killing it. Hmong women have been the backbone of successes within the Hmong community for a long time, and they don't hardly get enough love as they deserve. Um, so you know, I I wanna I wanna make sure that they're treated fairly as well. But to, but to answer your question, it's not just one person. It's not just one person. We have to we have to continue to show up and then also support each other, right? Like for example, there is Asia Asia Zhang or Asia Hyung. She is a wardrobe a wardrobe stylist uh, here in LA. She's worked with a lot of different clients. I think um, she had something. God, I think it was like late last year. She was working. I think it was like Rihanna or something like that. Something like that. Don't quote me on that. But she's getting big, um, you know. There's yeah, Asia. There's a lot of a lot of people, monk folks in LA actually come out here for fashion. So because the Fidum, uh, the Fashion Institute Institute of Design and Merchandising or something like that is here in LA. So it's a big, it's a big thing. Um, so we have to really find find everybody that needs support and oh, yeah, ask them up, put them out there. I think uh, yeah. I think the biggest thing is is um, putting that shit on on video. You know what I'm saying? Creating yeah. documentaries because because like right, you know, we we had that gold gold medal Olympias. Dude, we we got so much fucking successful entrepreneurs who are Hmong. Um, yeah. Shit, you know, you, you can just make a documentary on your parents. You know what I'm saying about their yeah, struggles you know. and stuff like that. It, it, yeah. It's just like like what we were talking about earlier, man. It's just it's just this is how we preserve our our culture, you know. It's, it's telling the stories, dude. It, it goes hand in hand with how we did tell our history. Is yep. we didn't have a written language until recent, and then how we passed down generation was through storytelling, you know. So yeah, through storytelling, through the spoken word, you know, yeah. um, you know, she could tell, like all that stuff, because we because we all everybody had a pulse on what was going on within the community. You know, you talk about like Gia Vang, the news anchor. She knew her, the, the news anchor, Ye, Chef Gia Vang. Um, yeah. You, we have so many different success stories. We have so many different success stories. And then, so we have to keep doing it. But more importantly, we can't just wait on somebody to get big, yeah. right? Because people in, in the Twin Cities have known about Sunisa for a long time. So, so like, we want to support them. Yeah. We want to support them because they may, not they, but like, it, someone might need the support now more than ever. You can't just be like one of those guys like, oh yeah, I knew them back when they were, they were nothing. It's like, well, why didn't you support them then? <laughs> no, a lot of those people. <laughs> well, that's the thing, right? It's just like, I don't, uh, I don't know. It's like, look, this is what support looks like. You know, yeah. we can't just, we can't be bandwagon fans. You know, yeah. we can't be bandwagon fans. Like once they get, once they reach a level of of fame, then you'll say, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah they're Martin. like." I get it. Sometimes you don't know. Like I'm not from the Twin Cities, so I did not know about Sunisa until, um, until she got big. Yeah. But had I known her before, yeah, it would, it would have been a different story. Yeah. So. That's yeah, true, man. Yeah. We got Frankie um, Frankie Yang, the uh, the podcast host here in LA. Gotta gotta hey. gas him up too. Coming up, man. We we uh we just started this uh, about a few, couple months ago. Um, and I think we almost two now. Yeah, almost two months. Yeah. Uh, Daniel, you're you're our, you're our second guest, man. Uh, I mean, bro, and I I thought about it, man. We should definitely get Daniel in here because I like, I know you have a lot of knowledge behind the the film industry, and not even that, you are you stand by mental health and and um. Bro, really... mental mental health is 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 such an important thing. It's yeah uh, yeah. 
Look, man, it, it's it's something that more people need to talk about, but I also I understand why some people don't because it's scary. It, it's scary to talk about mental health. It's it's scary the thought of going to a therapist. But you know what's even scarier? What happens when you don't go to therapy? Yeah. Because you know I, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get like serious for a second. But murder suicides. Like how much of that shit could have been prevented if someone if someone sought out therapy who could who could be saved you know? yeah um, um yeah that's just totally true man um that's kind of why we're kind of doing this too it's just to kind of spread the word and kind of get a community going of a move of a healthy movement mentality so um that's why we're doing this podcast man we want to make it informative for everyone and you know just kind of give our helping hand for anyone that's listening you know yeah i mean look i attribute i attribute like I don't want to say my knowledge, but but what I know about like mental health and taking care of yourself, I attribute that to honestly acting. Because my job as an actor is to understand. I don't necessarily like I could play um, a serial killer, a murderer, but my job as an actor is to is not to condone what they do, but to understand why they do it. Because to play truthfully, I have to really step in their shoes and be like, oh, okay, cool. I get it. So empathy is my job. So I get it. I, I, I there's there's so much work that needs to be done. I swear if everybody took an acting class, I'm not saying acting is therapy because it's not, but it is therapeutic and it opens up doors to be like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I I, I, I second that. Like not acting acting is I think a great avenue, right? Uh or yeah. or, an, or a speech class. Yeah. Acting, speech, you know, it's it's all about like being honest with yourself, and that's why, like, I love uh, I love film and television so much because through watching a television show, you get to ex- you get to experience those like emotional ups and downs, that emotional journey, without having to go through it yourself. Then, ideally, you have some questions afterwards. I'm like, oh well, I wonder. Like, I love Ted Lasso right now. Like, I wonder. If there are any issues that I am harboring that I'm not dealing with, and I'm having to stay positive just to move, just to like move past it. Um, hey Daniel, uh, so your your film right uh, that you're working on, right? The uh, Me yeah. Too. What's uh, what's that about? Oh, um, so it is about Jamie Ta. Um, he goes to an element. He goes to school to pick up his son, to pick us uh, pick up his son, but. Uh, while while he's waiting, he actually runs into me, and I'm a teacher. I'm a teacher, um, a teacher uh, who's also a father. We kind of have conversations, discussions about fatherhood, what it means to be a good father, both like and showing the difference between like generation, like oh, bejelote, um, you know, bejelote, bejita stylu. Like we're, we're the older generation, we can't necessarily find the right words, so it's just like do what we say do what we say we're, we're not quite sure why we don't have all the answers but just do what we say because you know we don't necessarily quite know how to explain it and whereas i talk about like in our generation um especially like my relationship with my dad it's like well i want you to it's okay for you to just say i don't know but i'm gonna do i'm gonna do the best i can with whatever knowledge i have so um yeah conversations about fatherhood um, what it means to be a son, what it means to, what it means to be a parent who can just, um, I guess, acknowledge the limits of their knowledge. So, yeah, it's a it's a conversational piece. That's dope, dude. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, so I, I think you're gonna have uh, I think you're gonna find a lot of supporters from uh, from the OGs. Yeah, well, I hope. I think that's I, where uh, that's where you that's where you're gonna find your funders. <laughs> hey, man, like, like, I'll, look. At this point, I'll take wherever the money comes from. I'll take it. You know, um, but I just I want to make a film that gets people talking. Yeah. You know, like it, it's one of those films where I like I want you to take your parents to, uh, and then when they're done, you'll be able to have like a conversation about like, so what do you think of what they said? What do you think? What do you think about that story? Um. You know, because you see stories, films like Everything Everywhere All at Once, you know, about uh, parents being kind of, you know, like, like yeah. grumpy. I'm like, you got to tell us. You got to, like, actually have conversations with us because we don't know what we're doing. We know that you don't know what you're doing, but can we yeah. at least get on the same page? 
I like that, man. I like that concept. I think that's pro- yeah. very powerful. Like some, some for me, anyways. Recently, is that like um, my dad died in uh, 2020, and then Sorry so I, I've been kind of realizing, you know, just the amount of sacrifice that our gran- our grandparents and our parents um, have done for us. You know, out of out of love, yeah. and there's that language barrier between me and um, my grandparents. But I've been I've been you know pathetically trying to speak my Monglish to them to ex- try to express you know how much I appreciate them and uh, and then you know now with me being married and being a father you know I I can kind of see a perspective and 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 yeah. and, and so so you know your film that you're working on Me Too I think um, if you can portray that emotion I think that I think that's going to be uh, pretty tight. Yeah, I mean I think I think it's. Uh... I mean, one of the one of the biggest lessons I learned in life was like when I could humanize my parents. Yeah. yeah. You know, you really take into account that like our parents and our grandparents they fled, they fled you know, Laos or at least I'm speaking for most of us in the United States who who our lineage goes back into Laos, but they escaped Laos, and like the the community structure was different. The yeah. community structure was different. They you know. So they literally had to survive, and they could only, they couldn't take everything with them. So, you know, like because they didn't really have like a set foundation and structure, they have to really make do with what they have. So, unfortunately, that also means that sometimes they don't, they aren't afforded the privilege of, of being able to make solid decisions. Be like, okay, let's stop and think about this because, yo. It's it's survival, you know. We got to put food on the table to make sure kids get to survive, you know. Some with with some Mongol American kids, it's like, don't worry about speaking Mong, like go go learn English because we don't want you to have to struggle like we're struggling now. Um, you know, there, there's so many things to it. So I was like, I get it. You did the best you could with what you with what you had, and so now it's really started that com- that dialogue of like, you know, as, as, especially like for people my age you know who have had kids or are going to have kids they can maybe have those conversations with their parents i'm like hey yeah. this scares me like the idea of being a father scares me like you know what can you say there's like and you know like it's going to be yeah. refreshing if your parent says hey i was scared too like you know uh like your little high i, I think i think you're on to something dude you know i, I hope you continue yeah. to keep on keeping on you know um I, yeah, your presence so. in LA and, and 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 you know, um, creating that network. You know, like I said earlier, yeah, you guys are pioneers. You know, this is how it starts. You know, is yeah, that? Yeah, we do what we can. You know, our parents yeah. walked so we could run. We're running so that the next generation can fly. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, uh, Daniel. Uh, man, uh, it's great to have you on the on the podcast, man. Good to hear your perspective, hear your story, yeah. and what you're doing. Um, Thank and, you guys for having me. Uh, We'd love to have you again, uh, hopefully soon, too, uh, see what you're up to and see how, what updates on the, the Me Too story and have, um, you know, hope, hopefully help you fund the uh, m- movie itself, too. So, yeah, um, I'd, love, I'd love any help I could get because uh, your boy is poor. <laughs> hey, movies man, cost money. Yeah, movies cost money, man. It's, it's, uh, it is what it is. But, um, but yeah, man, thanks for, uh, thanks for uh, coming on, dude. Uh, really appreciate your time. And um, your kind words and, and perspective and words of encouragement. Um, yeah, well, thank you guys so much for having me. Like I, I, I'd love to support you guys. Anytime there's an opportunity to have a conversation, like about about life, uh, about the struggles, mental health, emotional health, everything in between. I'm here. I'm here for it. You know, I don't have all the answers, but I can sit with you. We can talk about it. Cool. Yeah. 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 Oh, good. Yeah. That's dope, cool. man. Well, all right, all right, Daniel. Well, you have a uh, you have a great night. Happy Thursday, and have a great weekend. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Take it easy. See ya. Well, guys, that was Daniel, man. Uh, and look out for the new his uh, short me too. I'm looking forward to it, man. Um, that seems like pretty cool. Um, Daniel had a pretty cool perspective and in insights of the uh, the film industry. I thought we asked some pretty decent questions. Especially really the dick get, one. That was a great one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, could, that definitely come off guard. Um, well, we got to ask that every time, man. We got to ask that. <laughs> we got to ask that. Oh, um, 
But yeah, dude, uh, man, um, we glad. I'm glad to have Daniel on board. Um, I think I'm gonna, you know, have further conversations with Daniel about, uh, you know, uh, helping out the Hmong community and helping make that stronger over here and, and build the uh, community. Um, so, cool, uh, man. Cool, well, man. Thank, thank you, everybody, for watching, dude. We had somebody on Twitch message us. Huh? Yes. So they said, "Whoa." I've seen you on TikTok and YouTube Shorts. Hell yeah, dude! <laughs> one step, cool, we just need one person, bro. One person, hell yeah! And then uh, uh, Satana said hi, and then oh, uh, and and said what he said. So that's pretty cool, man. That's cool. We're growing, man. It's just consistency. So uh, every Thursday night, me and Peter are here. We're trying to bring something new to you guys every time. We're going to be bringing in Poker Night. Uh, I believe that's next weekend. First, the first of every uh, month. First Thursday of every month, they're going to be playing poker. And we're not betting actual money. <laughs> uh, so join us, guys, if you guys want to uh, to play and uh, join us in the Poker Night. Uh, so Poker Night on uh, the first Thursday, right, of every month, correct? Yes. Peter? Okay, yeah. Okay, cool. That's, uh, that's next Thursday, right? Is it next Thursday? Oh, shit. It is next Thursday. Next Thursday, Poker Night. And don't forget, we have the dating show on June 8th. Next, next Thursday. Two Thursdays from now. So it's going to be fun. Cool. We all are right, right girls. That's <laughs> on the dating show. I mean, that's, that's, I mean, just be excited, guys. It's going to be good. All right, dude. Thank you, everybody. Right. See you next week. Peace. Oh man, that was uh, that was a good stream, man.